This is a Friday Shoes production. This is lesson 2-10, page 130 in our book, The Target, I Can Express Numbers in Scientific Notation. So what's a scientific notation? Sounds pretty uh, intense. Well, it really isn't. It's pretty simple. Scientific notation is a compact way of writing numbers with val absolute values that are very large or very small. Basically, really large or very, very small numbers you can write them in a compact space. Here's an example. Consider this number here. Do you know what that number is? That's called one quadrillion. Think about if you had to write that in a paper, if you were in a scientific community and you're writing a, a magazine or a, a article about something very far away and you're using one quadrillion miles away. And you had to write that down every time or you had to write the word quadrillion. Doesn't that seem long? Well, there's a fast way to write it. And because we use the decimal system, it's all about powers of 10. So here's how you write one quadrillion scientific notation. It's actually 1.0 or one times 10 to the 15th power. What does scientific notation always have? Well, you can take a look here in this area. This is another number written in scientific notation. And what is the consistent pieces? Well, it's the first piece. I'll just make a box here. And it's times 10 to the something power. What does this number have to be? Well, it's got to be a factor greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. I always say we're going to find the number between 1 and 10, not including 10. It can be 1, though. And then in the power right here has to be, it's going to be an integer. So it's going to be a positive or negative whole number. If you look at what they stated here, when you multiply a positive power of 10, that moves a decimal to the right. When multiplying by a negative power of 10, that moves the decimal to the left. And the number of places the decimal point moves is the absolute value of the exponent, or the number part of the exponent. Best way to show it, or to learn it, is to show it and practice it a couple times. So here's a couple examples here. Write 5.34 times 10 to the fourth power in standard form. Standard form is just like a regular number form. Notice they give it to us in scientific notation. And we want to write it in standard form. Okay, so here's the easy way to do it. Take your number and move the decimal, this amount the exponent is. Now, if it's a positive number, we move to the right. So if you have a positive exponent, then we move to the right. If you have a negative exponent, and I can kind of see that's coming up down here, if you have a negative exponent, we're going to move to the left. So we take the decimal in our 5.34, and we move it literally four spots. And you kind of see what they did here to show you. Four spots. They moved it, and there it is. They put that dot on the end. Notice some spaces get filled in there because we had, uh, I'll do another way of showing it here. 5.3, move it at four spots. One, two, three, four. There's our new decimal. It's been moved. we got to fill in with zeros. So the answer is 53,400. Again, the decimal point moves four places to the right. The exponent tells you which way to move. Let's look at that second one. I'm sorry. Here we are. 3.27 times 10 to the negative third in standard form. Again, let's write it as a regular number. So we take our 3.27 and we move it three spots to the left now because it's a negative exponent. That's one, two, three. There's our new dot. Get rid of it here. Fill in with zeros. And there's our answer. 0 0.00327. So you, you can see when it's a positive exponent, you're going to end up with a number greater than 1. When it's a negative exponent, you're going to end up with a number less than 1. You try a couple here. Try these three. Come on back. We'll see how you did. Write each number in standard form. All right. So I've got 7.42 times 10 to the fifth power. 10 to the fifth power. That means I'm going to take my decimal and move it five spots to the right. So 7.42, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
add in your zeros, get rid of your dot there and put it over here because you moved it. And there you are. Move back, put in your commas where you need to. 742,000. So that number right there is actually 742,000. How about the second one here? Now I got a negative exponent. That means I'm going to move the decimal to the left two spots. So I have 6.1. I move it two spots to the left, and I fill in with a zero. So our answer to that is 0 0.061, 61 thousandths. And our last one, let's move our decimal two spots to the right. So we've got one, two, I'll do it right there in the number. So we'll end up with 371.4. Notice it stayed inside of this number, so we don't have to fill in with any zeros. There's the answer. Again, that's taking a uh, scientific notation number and changing it to standard form. What about the reverse of that? Taking a standard form number and writing it in scientific notation. Well, to do that, follow these steps. Number one, move the decimal point to the right of the first non-zero digit. Then two, count the number of places you move the decimal point. And then, of course, Find the power of 10, and that means will it be a negative or a positive number? Where did we move it? How many spaces did we move it? So let me show you through the example number three here. Write 3,725,000 in scientific notation. All right, step one. Let's take our 3725000 and take our decimal and move it to the right of the first non-zero digit. I will tell you right now, all you're going to do is work your way over until you have a number that is less than 10 and greater than 1 or equal to 1. Now, the way they say it is move the decimal point to the right of the first non-zero number. There it is. Here's the first non-zero number. Here's, here's the first non-zero number, so to the right of it. Next thing you do is you drop off these numbers, these zeros. You don't need them. So all you need is the 3.72 and 5. Then you write down your times 10 number. And then ask yourself, how many spaces did you move it? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I got six spaces. And the number itself is greater than 1, so it's a positive 6. If it was less than 1, it would be a negative 6. But in this case, it's a positive 6. There it is. Notice our the first part is a number between 1 and 10. And our exponent is a positive or negative integer. Let's go on to number 4 here. Write point zero 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 three one six in scientific notation. All right, let's move the decimal. One, two, three, four, to the right of the first non-zero number. So now we've got 3.16. You drop off the zeros. The zeros don't mean anything, or don't, we don't need them either. We write down our times 10. So we took this 3.16. That's where I moved the decimal to. And then we multiply by 10 to the, and then we count how many spaces we moved it. Well, I moved it one, two, three, four spaces. Four spaces. This number itself, the number itself is a number less than one, so we'll have a negative exponent here. So the answer is 3.16 times 10 to the negative fourth power. Try these three. Come on back and see how you did. Writing each number in scientific notation, not a problem. Here we go. Uh, 14,140,000. I need to move the decimal to the spot right here. So I'm going to have 1.414, drop off the zeros. How many spaces did I move the decimal? I remember now the decimal is over here. I'm doing it kind of fast here to show you. You can take some uh, shortcuts once you get used to this. Well, I'm counting how many spaces I moved it. I actually moved it over seven spaces. So it's going to be times 10 to the seventh power. This number is greater than 1, so it's going to have a positive exponent. Take a look at E. 
0.00876. Move the decimal over to the first, to the right of the first non-zero number. That's eight, between eight and seven. So you got 8.76 and then times 10 to the what? Well, how many spaces did you move it? One, two, three. This is a number that's less than one. So I know it's gonna be a negative exponent. And there's the answer. And the last one, again, it's gonna be a negative exponent because we have a number less than zero or less than one, excuse me. And we need to move the decimal to the first, to the right of the first non-zero number. That's 1.14 left over times 10 to that. What is it? We only got one spot, so it's gonna be negative one. There you have it. Don't hesitate to come on back and rewatch the video or read the examples in the book. They do have some other ideas there. And then, of course, you can watch the personal tutor videos. This has been a Friday Shoes production.